Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Okay. And it's another segment of Don't be telling my business. And I'm like, I got to because it's scandalous. Yes, it's scandalous. But we're going to be talking about just a tad bit off of the norm, but we're going to be talking about friendship. And choosing your friends wisely. Those two couple, they're not a couple, but Andy Cohen wanted to be a couple. Yes, back in the day, he saw more than just a friendship with this young man called Cooper. But he did the unthinkable. Andy, not and, <coughs> excuse me, not Andy, but uh, Cooper Anderson or Anderson Cooper, however y'all see it. Um, Andy Cohen was trying to set up a date with him and for some odd reason he must didn't do his research on Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper and his mother Gloria Vanderbilt had a very tenuous type of relationship or whatnot I should say. Um, he don't like anybody talking about his mom to him. Okay. Unless he wants to open up the door. But you don't make it a uh, icebreaker or a topic of conversation. And that's pretty much where the line was drawn. Where he would never see Andy Cohen as a mate. Meaning a sexual partner. A partner that uh, he wanted to have a life with. A family. You know that kind of thing. Because he didn't trust him. Or maybe Andy came off too soon. Too fast. And it might have scared him. Okay, but he ended up marrying somebody else. So it's neither here nor there at this time. Okay, but we're going to go about talking about what about your friends? Will they let you down? Will they stand their ground? Either Anderson Cooper is worried about Andy Cohen's coming up from the sidelines, taking his position in a journalistic type world, or he just don't feel Andy is... The right fit for anything uh, <coughs> anything in politics, anything political. He really don't think Andy can shine in that field. Which is a better way of saying, or a nicer way of saying, you're out your league. Okay? You're out your league. You're in that show business type, gossipy, um, rumored, uh, censored type of ratchetness. And we just don't get down uh like that we're j real journalists over here and you in that little celebrity world and you do a good job great job hosting and, and all that but mm, my constituents would not take you serious and you're not going to embarrass me that's the way i took the article and i was like dang anderson cooper got it like that he got it where he can pick and choose or promote someone or tear down someone or 86 someone from a job opportunity. Now, we know Andy hasn't been doing so well on his Watch What Happens Live ratings have been going down the toilet. And I can say this is not a hit for Portia's Family Matters. So that is a bad idea that he brought thinking it was going to save um bravo because they still had control of porsche's family matters production and hey they might be looking at replacing andy like you know andy wanted to keep his mouth shut about not putting any in his mouth ever again which she spearheaded that campaign and he was just honoring her wishes all right but uh like he was kind to kind enough to not put her on blast he just said mm, as far as bringing Nene back, um, I'm going to keep her name out of my mouth. And I am definitely going to move on with the other women who are doing a phenomenal job over there. Blase, blase. Just to get everybody off his ass about bringing Nene back. Because it was not going to be a, 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 do, a doable thing. Okay? Not going to be a doable thing. And just like Whitney said, I'm not mad. I can prove it. Is it karma being coming full circle for Andy Cohen of how he treated Nene. If in fact Nene was telling the truth about Andy Cohen. And all his racial profiling and this that and the third. Because all of it's allegedly as we can pretty much 
base it on because we knew Nene actually had got the big head, had co-signed to herself and pro self proclaimed that she was the head big and head bitch in charge over there at the Real Housewives of Atlanta franchise because she made it. She brought it into fruition. She was the uh, catalyst or the spearheader of putting Real Housewives of Atlanta on the map. And to a certain degree, we endured her and liked her antics she was putting out. But she pretty much said all the other cast members don't matter. It's me they're looking for they're checking for this that, and the third but honey i don't know if y'all been watching political news or anything on that but como uh if you don't know who i'm talking about google him up okay he and his family or his him and his brother were wrapped in some ethical things of the me too movement that you know they were doing some nasty things to some women over there and it got brought out and by his brother i think being the governor uh, he did some things, and his brother Como, uh, tried to how you call it, Chris Como, was trying to hide things, trying to find out how deep his brother was going to be, you know, in, and he was calling on favors, uh, for other journalists to check different things out for him and relate different things so he could possibly, you know, mute certain things that didn't need to be told. Anyway, he crossed the ethical line in the journalistic world you report it you investigate it you don't tamper with it that's their 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 rule of their law that uh andy cohen would definitely uh burn all those bridges because he always liked uh sensational scandalous news and his friend anderson cooper he likes to get to the point and nitty-gritty and he's going to find the truth if there's truth out there you know and he's not going to put his reputation on the line to do something unethical in the journalistic world but he don't feel that andy cohen is seasoned enough or ever will be seasoned enough to hold a position in higher rank of being a journalist over there where he's residing okay getting that journalistic news uh from cnn you know what i'm saying this is what people look for we we have presidential debates over here where we have the big chiefs coming out and asking and having them answer the hard questions that the citizens in the world want to know you know what i'm saying so he's like boy this ain't ratchet tv this is not show and tell no we get dressed up we look good and we talk about news you can use not that ratchetness of a demoralizing uh brain field with mush type of uh what kind of entertainment that you call yourself getting into no <laughs> he almost like he scoffed at him i was like oh my god is uh anderson cooper that arrogant that um cop blocking ways of keeping people out the door i guess he said the door is closed on my Padre, my so-called friend and the Cohen, we shall not let him in because he's not of good stock and his portfolio is only in ratchetness hosting ratchetness to uh drive up ratings so he can i mean he was like this is not the arena for that type of mess and with you coming over here and people viewing you you know you know seriously it's just gonna be impossible that's just like who hefner who was like the playboy pimp of the world before he died you know what i'm saying it's just like telling him he's gonna speak on uh the relationships of uh fidelity <laughs> and sustaining from sex okay <laughs> the two just don't match is basically what he was trying to tell his friend but i'm like damn you just nice nasty hit him with that news like that oh i don't want friends like that them seems like more four enemies than friends okay and keeping it real but let's get on into this article that daily mail uh uk had brought out on an interesting subject of two friends one that thought uh, he could depend on the other one for a, a new job opportunity and to open up new avenues where he can get off of Ratchet TV. But I'm like, honey, that's not like Jerry Springer trying to really go do something. 
are we really gonna take him serious? Some people do, but the majority don't. <laughs> I think he would try to run from governor himself or some kind of political office. Check back checkers, check for me. See if I got that absolutely true. Okay, but it goes in to say uh Gina Martinez that wrote the story about uh Anderson Co- uh, Anderson Cooper weighing in on whether his friend would be a good fit. Okay, it, she titled it, Anderson Cooper says CNN was right to fire uh, Chris. Okay, uh, who broke strict ethical rules and reveals Andy Cohen wanted fired anchor's job. Journalists have strict rules and if you don't abide by them, they are or they can have repercussions. So there you go, Andy. Hell no, you can't come up here and get this man's job. Because you don't know nothing about ethical behavior. Look how you act over there on your show. Okay, that you helped produce and brought it to fruition. You know, the Real Housewives of Atlanta and all the franchises there, how the women get down. No, 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 no. We don't uh, deal in that kind of stuff. I don't know if we could uh, polish you up. And brand you out in a different way to be in the political world. At least that's what I got from people. I'm like, ah, no, that's nice nasty right there. But um, it says the host of Anderson Cooper 360 appeared on the late show with Stephen Colbert on Thursday and spoke about the surprise ousting of Chris. Okay, well, we're going to call him CC over here. Um, CC was fired at the AG Lat- the Titia James released documents that showed the TV presenter lied about his assistance to his older brother. Then he initially led on. Look, I don't want anything bad to happen to somebody who is a colleague and a friend of mine. I feel terrible for him and his family, Cooper said. Cooper joked about his best friend, Andy Cohen, host of Bravo's Watch What Happens Live, immediately gunned to replace CC and Cooper. Shut him down. <laughs> I'm like, damn, is that a friend that do some stuff like that? And then gonna tell the public about it? I mean, late shows come on after 12 midnight, but it still be some peepers out there. It still be some people who can show and tell and report scandalous reports on people doing people wrong out here. Okay. Um, he goes on to say he feels he is fully qualified to host a presidential debate because he hosts the Housewives of Reunions. Okay. Cooper joked about his best friend's qualifications. So I said, well, somebody had to, they, they for be telling the truth. They be saying they joking, they ha ha kiki's laugh. But when they put it out there like that, that ain't no joke. They just giving you a front row seat of how things can be exposed. And he don't want to be in the same room with any allegations coming up with Andy Cohen and his ratchet TV platforms he's been on. So he was kind of trying to say, look, you are staple. People will always see you as this. Nobody's going to take you serious because you have no ethical boundaries. So I'm just going to tell you as your friend, don't try for it. And I'm going to give you thumbs down. Even though I think, you know, if you cleaned yourself up on um, your job portfolio and you do more, I don't know, something on your serious channel talking about maybe the gay um, outlook on how... Um, the community is faring. Are they being treated correctly? You know, more exposés on that. Something that people can relate to and you're not making a mockery out of it. Maybe you should build on that first. And then later on, we might can slide you in, uh, you know, give you a new opportunity to be seen for something else other than Ratchet TV showing production. Okay. But anyway. <clears throat> Uh, see, you know, Anderson Cooper said he feels terrible for his good friend CC after he was fired by the network, but admitted that it was the correct decision during an uncomfortable segment with the late night host Stephen Colbert. Look, I don't, you know, like I said, he goes on to say he feels bad for his friend and his colleague, and he feels muchly uh, uh, disappointed and upset that his family has to go through so much turmoil around this issue. And, you know, Cooper <laughs> had stammered and wrinkled in his seat during the appearance of the late show with Stephen Colbert. 
Uh, I guess he had to make something light of it, so he threw Andy Cohen under the bus. And, you know, because he basically say, you know, journalists have to have strict ethics and r strict rules that they abide by. And if you don't abide by them, they are repercussions. Okay, it's almost like you're getting your hand slapped when the elite don't told you what to do. But you defied them, you rebelled, and you didn't do it. Then they have to come back and do you like Bill Cosby. Put you behind in jail, set you up. <laughs> put you behind bars and let you think about it for a while and then maybe if you come to see what they want you to do that it's not so bad uh it's a, a doable situation then they let you out they erase everything and let the stuff go up under the rug and never be spoken of again unless you want to not do something they ask you to do nicely okay um then it goes on, you know, to say they talked about what uh, CC brother was uh, in uh, engulfed in, which was a lot of, you know, sexual harassment on the job towards the women, uh, <clears throat> things that were just too, uh, you, things that were not verbalized that really showed his brother um, in a bad light, and CC. Being the youngest brother felt that he had to protect his family and his brother from all the uh, backlash that would come. He was trying to get him a heads up of what was going on. And that is what, you know, it's called like tampering with evidence in a sense. Um, that's what CC did for his brother. And people caught wind of it. Other uh, white people got caught the wind of it. And they put it and exposed it and made CC. Uh, feel very uncomfortable or the pressure was getting to him so he thought he would bail out and just tell on himself of what he had did behind the scenes so uh but anderson cooper joked that when it was put out there that cc was gone fired uh never to be thought of again in the journalistic world and especially at cnn guess who was on the phone telling uh anderson cooper that he wanted that job could he help him get that job child Anderson Cooper said the first call that he got was from his old buddy or his new buddy or good buddy. He said it didn't take long for another good buddy to ask for the job. Okay. The first call I got after I got the call about Chris uh, was Andy Cohen. Do you think I could get that show? This is what Andy is asking. His friend, his compadre, you know, his best bud that he wanted to be his sex partner his uh part of his family he wanted to marry the man child he was like you think you can get me in brother i know you can can you do it and i'm like all the shit talking you were talking i don't know i don't know he, he <laughs> cooper told colbert i was like andy you got enough real estate and television okay you got enough on your your plate uh, the ever-present Bravo personality hosts CNN's annual New York Countdown with Cooper and is better known for producing the Real Housewives franchise. He feels he is fully qualified to host a presidential debate because he hosts the Housewives reunion. That's the similarity he was trying to make to his friend or pitch to his friend. Hey, I could do that. I did that. But, you know, can you get me in? And he's like, hell no. You ain't finna embarrass me, son. You ain't finna embarrass me. Because he did say Cooper joked, okay, about his best friend's qualifications. And, you know, he half-heartedly agreed that it's a possibility. Um... He could 100% take the job. But he, he, Cooper and, and, and Anderson has been friends for umpteen years. Okay, so I'm like, nah. <laughs> he didn't want to say it on real TV, but we got the hidden messages. We got the body language. We got the tonation of the conversation. You didn't want Andy Cohen nowhere near a platform that you were associated with because, you know, it's questionable. His whole background is questionable and it's built around ratchetness. So he didn't want to embarrass his friend on live TV or tape TV uh, saying what he really felt because he was just giving him, you know, a pass on certain things. But I'm like, Anderson Cooper, you said it all when you said you thought your friend or your friend thought since he hosted TV shows for laughter and entertainment, he would be a good fit to host something as a presidential uh, debate. And he would be the host and he could ask the tough, tough questions. And in other people's minds, going to be like, why is he him? 
why are we taking questions from him he he's not in a political ring we can't take him serious he on that little girl show where people embarrass they sell real bad <laughs> That's pretty much what Anderson Cooper was thinking in the back of his mind is what the candidates, whoever he's, you know, interviewing at the time. It could be political. It could be a presidential debate or it could be something, you know, on uh, something that's really happening out in the world. You know, drug trafficking, uh, children trafficking, um, what do you call it? Um, I don't know, infractions of the world, uh, what do you call it, uh, earth travel, or uh, space travel. It could be any topic that means something to people in a, a holistic type way. Uh, not something that they want to sit and see uh, Andy Cohen and they think it in their mind. This man hosts ratchet TV shows. Why is he feel, or why do they feel he's qualified to be up in this political arena, arena with real questions, real situations that affect people's lives, literally, the decisions that are made in Congress and in the White House? Why, why we have Andy Cohen here again? <laughs> is this some kind of joke? You got me on, uh, what do you call that, candid camera, where, where they pranking you and stuff. That's what most people would think. I mean, hell, I would. I'd be like, why we got Andy Cohen up here? Well, oh, no, this ain't going to work. It ain't working for me. It ain't working for me. <laughs> but what do y'all think about snarky, arrogant Anderson Cooper closing the door opportunity for Andy Cohen to uh, switch over or get in another avenue of making his money? You know, and his uh, so-called friend chin checking him like, no, buddy, no, buddy. You have enough invested in television. That's how he want to put it. That's how, you know, the upper echelon people act. Like, they try to downgrade you, but try to uplift you at the same time. <laughs> I'm like, woo. Now, that's some serious shade if you ever want to talk about somebody shading somebody. Okay, but that's all I got for this video, guys. I thought y'all would love it. It's a different spin. It's just showing you another way that people can put you down, that you think that are your friends, but really not. And Anderson Cooper makes a lot, a hell of a lot of money. Okay, and then he works for a prominent um, broadcasting system such as CNN. You know and the coin would want that kind of a paycheck, that kind of a payday. Okay, and it puts him in another light of people seeing him as well. But Anderson Cooper said, hell no, hell to the no, no, no. But that's all I got for this video, guys. Y'all like it, love it, gotta have more. Don't hesitate but to hit that subscription button, okay? You know when I drop down videos, okay? As well as like and share my videos. That helps me out a lot. Okay, guys, y'all be breezy and I'll see y'all next video. Peace.